Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Tiva Drive. And this time around we'd like to introduce you to this amazing 2022 Volvo C40. The smaller and sportier uh, brother to Volvo XC40 Recharge, which we drove recently twice, once in the summer and once in the winter conditions. Uh, it's plus 16, but it feels much cooler than that with a cold um, uh, wind coming off the lake, hence my coat. Um, so what we want to show you first of all is, as usual, walk around the car, show you the differences with its uh, larger brother, and then we'll show you the front seat space, rear seat space, trunk space, and the front, of course. So let's start with the design of the, the front. This is the new design that you may see in the Volvo XC40 Recharge as well. Uh, you have very similar headlights, Thor's hammer, here you have uh, your fog lamps here, both LEDs, of course. Mm, uh, these are um, matrix uh, LEDs uh, that adjust, but the matrix is only for high beam that adjust to the oncoming traffic, etc. Uh, you have all kinds of cameras and sensors here in the front, the park parking sensors as well. So this is a typical uh, face of both the XC40 and the C40. Now, C40 only comes as electric, where XC40 comes in uh, full gas, plug-in hybrid, and full electric. Of course, here in Canada, we only get the gas version and the full electric version of the XC40. The C40 is only available as uh, full electric everywhere, all over the world. Okay, apologies for this noise. There is some people doing work, their jobs in the, this nice park at Mimico Waterfront. So the, the side of the car looks very similar to XC40. You have the 20 inch rims here, which are 235 front, 255 back. So they are staggered. Um, what you will see right away when you look at the car from the side is the lower profile of the car. So the, the bottom part is, is very similar to XC40. The upper part, this is where you see the coupe. This is where uh, you see the better aerodynamics of this car versus its bigger brother. So it's a compromise. This is faster. This actually has more horsepower as well. This car here has 450 horses versus 400 horsepower for the XC40. It's about half a second faster as well. So even though it has better aerodynamics because it has more power, the range may not be that much bigger. The uh, official range estimate is 365 kilometers on this particular car. We're about to put it to the test, of course, as usual, using the highway going north to our lake house and then coming back doing the hyper mile test using the side road. So we'll report back on that after we do that trip. So let us show you more of the outside of the car. Again, the front door, you can see here the coupe outline of the car. Uh, it looks very sporty. Uh, because of the slanted roof, uh, you know, you can, you can tell that the headroom evidently is gonna be much less than the taller XC40 because of the shape of the back. And uh, we'll show you the inter indoor interior space uh, in a moment. Let us show you basically here in the rear uh, driver's side, you have the charge port. So you have the level two plus a level three. There is a charging light right here and there's a button to unlock your uh, charge port, which you can also do through the phone app and you can do it through the menus in the car. So here it is, and now the most distinct or distinctive uh, part of the car is its rear. It looks completely different from the XC40 uh, brother. And you can see it's a coupe uh, version of the car. And then you can see here the spoilers are very unusual shape here to improve the aerodynamics. Even the shape uh, of the lights of the rear LEDs. The general shape is similar, but it's completely different here with the dotted LEDs on top. Here's the brake light is located here. Uh, the spoiler is here. And of course, again, missing rear wiper. However, we can report after driving in heavy rain that this uh, windshield does not get as dirty as the Hyundai Ioniq we just drove, the, hence we complained about the lack of rear wiper and apparently Hyundai will listen and put one in in the next model year. Here, the lack of uh, rear wiper uh, does not to be 
um, a, a big issue so far from our tests. So, but again, you know, they may perhaps include it in the future version, depending on the feedback from the owners. Uh, the trunk as well, it's the same as in all other um, Volvos with a swipe of your foot, works very well. Uh, you have pretty big trunk, of course, the upper uh, part is smaller, so the trunk will be smaller than the XC40 just because of the shape of the hatch. Uh, you have more storage here under uh, for cables, your emergency tire kit, uh, and then you have your 40-60 split seats with a pass-through for skis or longer objects. Also, please note the, the rear fogs that the Volvo, all Volvos have and the unpainted bumper, which is kind of neat. Uh, you know, you don't have to worry about bumping into something, scratching it because it's an unpainted. The whole bottom of the car is basically unpainted plastic, which some people may like, some people won't. But um, so this car, as you see it, there's only one version, $72,000, which makes it $12,000 more expensive than the XC40 brother. Uh, some will may question uh, why uh, this car is $12,000 more than a very similar XC40. Well, you know, number one, it's uniqueness. Uh, number two, people will know that you're driving electric because this car is only available in electric. Even though the front is very similar, people can tell that this is a, it's different. Uh, number three, it's faster, it's more, it's more sporty. It has slightly longer range because of its uh, aerodynamics. And uh, finally, you know, the, it's good to have choices, right? So you can go for the uh, larger and cheaper XC40, slightly larger, or you go for the more sporty, more unique uh, C40. In terms of positioning versus its cousin Polestar, uh, the size of this car is kind of in between the two, also in terms of the power. So the base Polestar, with its 408 horsepower is less than this one, which is 450 horsepower. And then the high performance, the performance version of the Polestar 2 is 470 horsepower. So it's slightly more than this. And the Polestar in its uh, performance version is slightly faster than this car. Uh, and in terms of the pricing, um, even with all the upgrades, the performance upgrades, the long range Polestar 2 comes in at 66,000 here in Canada versus this Volvo C40, which is 72,000. So the Polestar 2, even with performance upgrade, is still a little bit cheaper. Why? The, the simplest explanation, most likely, it's where it's made. This car here is made in Europe, in Belgium, where the Polestar 2, as you know, is made in China. Uh, the future Polestar 3 may be made, or actually will be made for sure, in the United States. Uh, so that's going to affect the pricing. All right, so let's jump inside and show you the interior space. Okay, so here we are in, uh, inside the uh, Volvo C40. The, the front seats are very comfortable, very sporty, a lot of uh, lateral support. Um, high quality materials throughout. The center uh, panel is very similar to Volvo XC40. You have the, um, uh, these, uh, you know, the center screen here, similar size to XC40 and a lot of the other Volvos as well. It's a Google-based system, which we're not crazy about, to be honest. I signed in with my Google account and I still found it difficult to use the Google Assistant uh, you know, in terms of dictating messages, reading messages, replying to messages, etc., etc., uh, it, it is telling me that I have to change some test settings, which uh, honestly I tried but gave up. So it will be so much easier, simpler to just to have Android Auto on this car since it's a Google-based system, anyways. Why not just at least offer as an option to have a, you know, Android Auto available in 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 uh, in the Volvos and 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 Polestar's? To be honest, like that, that's what I would prefer. We're just used to Android Auto and Apple, and most people are using Apple CarPlay on Android Auto. It would be so much easier just to continue using it in this car. So that's kind of the only complaint about the system. Uh, we'll go through the menus when we do the driving part of the car. So the seat, the the, the seat is obviously adjusted uh, electrically. So I'm going to adjust my front seat 
Uh, it's got lumbar support and adjustment, etc., etc. The seats are heated, of course. The wheel is telescopic and tilt, but it's manual. It's not e electric like in some of the other luxury electric cars that we have driven. Uh, so it's a manual adjustment for the wheel and, of course, electric adjustment for the seat. So I'm going to position it comfortably now for my front seat position and then we'll check out the back seat. Let me just point out a few more items here. Just like in all the other Volvos, you have the rear defroster, front defroster, radio volume, skip forward, skip back. Uh, your emergency hazard lights is here. 12 volt outlet, USB-C. There is no US, regular USB. So I'm charging my phone from the wireless. The wireless charging pad is here. Of course, with my heavy cover, uh, the wireless pad does not work correctly. I have to remove it from the cover in order for it to charge properly, and it does not charge uh, uh, very fast. A um, couple of cup holders, your gear shifter is just very simple, just like in most of the other Volvos. There's a bit of a storage compartment here. When you open it here, this is actually removable like little storage, storage compartment made in Slovenia. There you go. All of this, this is a backlit LED front, which doesn't exist in the XC40. So it's a very nice, they you know, modernize this interior, but by doing backlit LED, um, this is supposed to be topographical map of Sweden, actually, somehow. I don't know how, but that's what it's supposed to be. So you see it here on the front, uh, one section, two sections here in front of you, and then again on the other door, and on the other door as well. And uh, so now let's jump in the back and show you the, the back space. So here is where you see the difference, stark difference with the XC40, its larger brother, because this is a sporty coupe, and the roofline cuts into the the head rate head space here so i'm definitely touching the uh the roof here the glass doesn't go far enough it ends here maybe if it ended or if it had a cutout for for your head uh, as we've seen in one of our other electric vehicles that we recently drove maybe that would help but it's not it ends the glass ends here which means that you're touching the ceiling with your head for anyone who's 190 or more, this is gonna be pretty tight. Same with the leg space, it's not super tight, but it is quite uh, tight. There's enough space for legs here, so that's fine. Uh, but uh, no, there's not a huge amount of room uh, for tall people in the back, okay? You have your vents here for heating and air conditioning here. Again, uh, uh, seat heaters uh, left and right, and you have your, uh, your, your uh, charge port here. Now this is, uh, this is your 100, no, this is your, uh, sorry, two USB ports, USB-C again, and your uh, left and right seat heater, and then just some vents. There are no vents in the B pillar. Okay, and of course you have your uh, armrest here with two cup holders. And um, that's about it. Then you have the pass-through. To get to the pass-through, you just open it here, and then you just open it there. If you have skis or long items, this is where you can open it up. All right, and that's about it. You've seen the, the, the rear, you've seen the trunk, you've seen the inside. Let us show you the frunk up front. And here you have the frunk. So it's not huge, but it's just enough for cables or some small items when you're traveling. Um, this is one of those EVs that actually does have the frunk. Some of the other cars like uh, Volkswagen ID4, BMW iX, BMW i4 do not have the front uh, trunk or frunk as we call it. And here is your space to fill up your windshield washer. That's the only thing you really need this area for. That's about it. So next we'll jump in and we'll take you for a spin in the car and show you all the uh, features of the screens and give you our driving impressions. And we're gonna quickly go through the menus as all, these, all of these menus are very similar to the two XC40 videos that we shot uh, last year and the last winter. Um, including various impressions from the fast charging sessions. So in this instance, we only did one fast charging session at the upper end of the battery. Um, we did not get the chance to do the uh, lower end of the battery, but uh, to be expected that the curve will not be as good as our Audi e-tron, which is the benchmark of uh, fast uh, charging uh, electric SUVs. Um, so 
basically will let us show you again quickly the the main dashboard which has two different views which are regulated by this button on the steering wheel here this is the map view now and we if you remember from our previous videos there was no map option for the uh, main dashboard uh, we uh, gave an idea that this should be displayed on the main uh, uh, on the main dash uh, just like in the Polestar so Volvo listened and they included the mapping uh, in the um, on the main dashboard we can also have the map here if you go to main menus here's you can have the map on the center screen and uh, you can also have the map on the main uh, dashboard okay I don't know why we have navigation navigation should be canceled cancel there you go no need to have navigation so um, the other display is just minimal display so you have your speedo on the left power range on the right the gear positioning and the only thing that this place in this blank middle space is the arrows when you're navigating it will show arrows uh, pointing left or right to let you know of the next turn when navigating other than that it just stays blank this whole middle space is pretty blank in some other versions of the Volvos we saw the the autopilot displays uh, but that's we find that particular display is pretty useless I'm not sure why you need the visualization of the cars in front of you and how close you are and the close the cars next to you you know Tesla owners seem to be getting excited about the visualizations of the car uh, you know on the on the center screen honestly you know um, I don't I don't care about that so as long as you can see the map here and then directions for navigation uh, that's the the, the the other thing is this is this car comes only with one version that's at $72,000 it's pretty well equipped but it does not have a, a head-up display so we'll have to check and see if this is available as an option but this car does not come with a head-up display which in at 72 grand you'd figure that it should automatically come with the head-up display as standard that will be our impression so in terms of the positioning of the car how, to, how is it positioned it's positioned uh, very similar pricing to model 3 long range uh, it's actually two grand less uh, with a very similar performance characteristics you know four and a half seconds to a hundred but this is a crossover SUV hatchback where the model 3 is a sedan uh, if you want to compare it with the model Y which has also similar uh, performance characteristics except the range of course Tesla will always, ha always have a longer range but in terms of the acceleration and everything else uh, it, it can be compared to the model Y now the model Y was actually twelve thousand dollars more than this uh, Volvo C40 also the availability of this car you can have the car if you order today you can have it this summer where uh, as you know the availability for model 3 long range and model Y long range uh, dual motors uh, varies you know anything from end of this year to early next year even because of the supply issues um, so it may come down to that um, the cars again we remind you uh, um, use a Google system it does not have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay it's strictly a Google system so you have to sign into your Google account as you can see I'm signed into the Google account right now in order for you to download the apps you have to be signed in into the Google account uh, it works differently than the Android Auto which just copies your phone over to the to the car this is a separate uh, not all the apps available in Android Auto are available in this Google system for example we were able to download um, uh, the well, Spotify was already there we also managed to download uh, ChargePoint uh, app we managed to download YouTube music and TuneIn radio now all of these apps I use on my phone without creating an account so just as a guest uh, I'm using those apps unfortunately the Volvo this Google system will not let me use those apps so if I try and click on uh, my favorite tuning radio where I listen to a lot of European radio you you click on it you'll see a message loading content but it forces you to log into uh, tune in now the strange thing is yesterday when I was driving back my phone was connected uh, by the way this is the wireless charging pad and again because my, of my phone cover it charges only and barely when I remove the phone from the cover and place it here uh, yesterday driving from uh, you know north to south uh, the phone went from uh, 46 to 54 percent over two hours and I'll tell you in a second our results of this hyper mining exercise um, so anyways uh, I was able to play strictly from my phone my phone was already uh, set on playing uh, the TuneIn radio app when I uh, turned the car on it started playing the TuneIn radio however you cannot control it 
through the main screen here until you actually sign into each of the apps. Same with uh, Spotify. Uh, I'm using it on my phone just as a guest. You cannot do, that, do it through the uh, car main screen. You have to be signed into each of the apps through the car screen, which is kind of a pain, you know, and in that respect, I really honestly prefer using Android Auto in uh, all the various electric cars. Um, some of them have, you know, wireless, just like all the BMWs, it's, it's a wireless um, Android Auto. And then uh, cars like uh, Hyundai and Kia, you have to plug it in physically through cable to use your Android Auto. Um, so that's about for the, for the main screen. All the other screens you can uh, refer back to our, um, you know, other videos from other uh, Volvo XC40 recharge videos. They are, everything is identical. So the only thing we experienced yesterday was a software update that took about 90 minutes. So while charging overnight at the lake house, the car went through its uh, uh, software update over the air. Uh, which is kind of nice. It's Tesla style updates. So we noticed some minor visual differences. Uh, for example, in your range assistant, if we just go back to the main screen, uh, let's go back to the main screen and we, let's go for the range assistant. If I can find it, it's hiding somewhere. Range assistant right there. So some visuals here changed. So you have, we're right now at 94%. Um, and uh, the car shows th average range of 370 kilometers, uh, average a maximum of uh, 430 and minimum of 230, depending on your style of driving. The car also shows you how much energy is being used by each of the items here, such as speed, driving style and climate control. You have a range optimizer. All it does is basically minimizes your energy usage of the climate system. That's all it really does. Okay, so we're going to hit the road and uh, give you our general driving impressions and the results of our hypermiling exercise, as well as our regular highway driving to and from our lake house. So the, the way you start the car, there is no stop, start stop button. You can see it's been, it's been blanked out here. You just press on the brake pedal and you put it in gear and you're driving. So in these spring conditions, we were able to obtain a pretty good result. Um, as you know, the standard test we do uh, on the way north, we just use the highway using, uh, you know, middle to left lane speed on highway 400 northbound. And then on the way back, we use the side roads. Um, we use the highway 27 combination. So some cities, some side roads in, uh, in the country. First of all, let us tell you what our experience was driving um, northbound. Um, the average that we got on on the car, whoops, that's uh, just craziness today. I'm not sure what's happening. Maybe another Jay's game. Uh, crazy traffic today. Um, so on the way north, uh, our result using the highway was an average of about 23 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which gives this car approximately 350 kilometer range on the highway. Okay, so um, it's not bad. Honestly, it's not bad. Now, then on the way back, um, using the side roads, maximum uh, 90 kilometers per hour uh, on Highway 27, we managed to bring down the result down to 18 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which would give this car a range of 433 kilometers, which is really good. That result is you know, substantially less than the 19 plus kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers hypermile exercise um, that we did on our Audi way, way back when, when it was brand new two years ago. Uh, and since then we could never uh, meet that result, partly because we switched tires to our winter tires. Now we have uh, much wider summer um, tires and rims. Uh, so I don't think we'll ever be able to uh, achieve that result again. Plus the car is now older. Um, so this is a very good result for a, you know, car that is slightly smaller and lighter than our Audi e-tron, but it's also more powerful. Remember, this is the most powerful Volvo ever with 450 horsepower, four and a half second acceleration from zero to 100. Uh, similarly to all the um, T8 uh, plug-in hybrid Volvos, uh, such as an XC60 and XC90, they got an upgrade in battery up to 18 kilowatt hours and also upgrade uh, in horsepower to 450. So between those two and this pure electric, um, it, th these are the most powerful Volvos. So very high performance Volvos, which is unlike the previous generation of Volvos, which are very docile, safe cars, not very fast. This is a very sporty, 
uh, one of the sportiest Volvos uh, ever, you know. So it kind of reminds me a little bit of the of the V60 uh, T8 uh, Polestar engineer that we drove. Uh, it feels uh, very fast. It feels even faster because this is obviously pure electric, and Volvo will have pure electric cars across their entire lineup together sold first of all together with the plug-in hybrids uh, then eventually they'll eliminate uh, you know the gas cars and then they will eliminate uh, plug-in hybrids and they'll be all electric within the next uh, uh, decade um, and that's the case with most of the other companies including companies like Mercedes BMW Audi etc etc so these are this is likely the last decade of uh, the gasoline cars uh, they are going by the way of the dodo bird uh, they'll be extinct very very soon uh, so what can we can compare it with of course we mentioned Tesla Model 3 and Tesla Model Y uh, and people who want do a lot of road tripping and want to use the Tesla supercharger network will choose a Tesla no matter how long it takes for you to wait for the delivery um, keep in mind that you know down the road at some point Tesla will open up their supercharger network with adapters to other EVs like they did in many European countries such as Norway Holland Germany France etc etc right now so we're waiting for that to happen in North America and then we would love to repeat our cross-country trip uh, using our Audi e-tron or some future electric car in our family using the Tesla supercharger network that would be that would be fabulous um, in the meantime what else can it be compared with for example the BMW i4 we just drove in its high performance 50m version has uh, even more horsepower it's priced the same this is 72,000 the BMW i4 M starts the base price is also $72,000 that BMW yes it's a little bit smaller and lower it is also a hatchback there's also a fairly limited back seat space for tall people but that bmw is way faster it's it's a high performance that competes with model 3 performance competes with mustang mach egt uh, it has a sub four second performance like about 3.7 seconds so it's a full second faster than this car but you know here you get the taller driving position right um, of course you can also compare it with uh, the uh, hyundai ionic we just drove which is uh, uh, you know about twelve thousand dollars cheaper um you know or the um, kia ev6 um you know which which are have very similar performance they are about five seconds versus four and a half seconds here so this is has more horsepower definitely but it's only half a second you know difference in the end um the other cars are a little bit more efficient of course because they have the, the various diff different modes keep in mind this car again has no eco mode there's no eco no normal it's all sport there's only one mode and that's sport mode so in order to extend your to hyper mile you really have to be super careful and uh, drive you know be take it easy on the ac accelerator pedal so when we were driving you know hyper mining it on the way back it was kind of all just manual control of the uh, uh, of the car so it looks like we are in a traffic jam probably Lakeshore is closed or something for biking events or something else so we will not be able to uh, give you our impressions of the uh, of the autopilot but you activate it basically using these buttons here on the left and our impression is it, it, it is supposed to be hands-free but not really the car will not let you take your hands off within a couple of seconds of you taking the hands off it rings alarms and then it disengages now when you're even keeping your hands on sometimes it thinks you're not and you'll have to jerk at the wheel to to um, get rid of the the warning bells uh, that you're not holding on to the wheel so it's kind of uh, uh, unfortunate that you have to do that uh, and uh, what else even when you're driving and you have your hands on the steering wheel you can feel the wheel going left and right so it's kind of slow, uh, slightly bouncing of uh, both uh, you know mark uh, lane markers um, so it's not as stable as some of the other um, auto steer systems um, and the other thing that we keep mentioning to Volvo is all the other electric cars that with auto steer systems they have an audible signal very clear audible signal when the auto steer turns off Volvo does not and it's pretty dangerous because even if you take your hands off the wheel for a second which you should not but for whatever reason and the system turns off at that very moment you could end up in a ditch or the car can go off in a different direction we also had uh, issues with the auto steer at sharp turns it wasn't able to keep up with sharp sharp turns and it would disengage without any warning so basically you have to really 
keep close attention to this uh, auto sear system and you have to be aware of uh, those limitations. So it seems like Lakeshore is, is closed. So um, again, uh, just to come back to our you know, DC session for a second, um, you know, we only did one at the higher end of the battery. So we started at 60% uh, and then the car started at around 70 uh, kilowatts of speed at 60% of battery. It quickly, uh, you know, tapered off to about 37 and it just stayed there. We didn't fully charge it because we would be, it would take way too long at 37 uh, kilowatts of speed. So the car at the upper end of the battery doesn't charge very fast, like a lot of other electric cars. Um, so in that respect, our Audi charges much faster at the upper end of battery, 150 all the way up to 80%. This car is also capable of 150, but it will only do it at a very low state of charge, likely around 20, 30%. And beyond that, you know, the car will taper off to a much slower speeds. Uh, so keep that in mind when you plan your, your trips. Um, the Google Assistant works pretty well, but again, you have to be signed into your Google account to use it. Uh, then, even if you want to dictate uh, text messages or reply to text messages, you, uh, the car forces you to change certain settings within the Google menu to allow for that. So it took us a while to figure out how to do that. Uh, and, and so eventually we did activate it. Now I'm signed into the car with all my apps, which again, need another sign in separately to those apps through the car. Um, and and uh, then you can basically read your text messages and reply to them by verbal commands, which is which is kind of nice. It's exactly what we've been doing with all the other electric cars using our Android Auto, whether wirelessly or through the USB cable. Um, so again, I think it would be more logical. You can get used to the system, but again, some of the nice apps that we're used to uh, do not exist uh, in the Volvo uh, Google system. For example, the perfect example is the Waze navigation. We always use Waze when navigating. Um, here, you can only use Google navigation. Uh, I mean, it works well, but it doesn't have all the same functionality that uh, the Waze has uh, for warning you of things happening on the street, uh, accidents, slowdowns, shutdowns, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, objects on the road, uh, uh, vehicle stopped. Um, so Google will redirect you around, you know, some construction issues like we're seeing right now, but uh, it does not have all the other information. So we wish that either Volvo should make all the same apps available through Android, Android Auto available on the, uh, available on the, um, uh, you know, on the, on the Google system, or we should basically, you know, uh, just let them have a regular Android Auto here. Okay, so it's, they, they want it to be different. I guess they want it to be better. We personally, I don't think it's better. I would prefer just to have my regular Android Auto working in this car. Okay, so again, fantastic car, uh, very attractively priced. $12,000 more than the XC40, yes, but this C40 is only produced as a, an electric car. We love this car. We highly recommend it. Uh, please consider it uh, when you're shopping for electric cars, whether the C40 or XC40, both excellent cars for different reasons. Um, and, and as usual, if you have any questions about our review or our experience with this car, feel free to comment. Uh, under our video. We'll be happy to try and respond as much as we can to all your questions. And as usual, do not forget to press the subscribe button on, uh, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash TV Association. Thank you for watching. All right, so because Lakeshore uh, Eastbound was uh, closed and we couldn't experiment with the uh, auto steer, we're doing Lakeshore Westbound now. <coughs> Excuse me, and we have the uh, auto steer on as you can see um, The system here shows you that it's the, the auto steer is on uh, Again, we used to just went through a sharp turn. I had to correct the car didn't do the sharp turn correctly Let's see if it does it now and how quickly we'll get the warning hold steering wheel. There you go I have to jerk at the wheel Substantially now it's off. So we're auto steering again after a few seconds I'll get another warning and another sharp turn turn coming up and we're coming to a red light stop hold steering wheel okay I'm gonna take over because we're approaching the, the, the light so as I mentioned to you before um, make sure that uh, you hold the steering wheel at all times and you remain vigilant because the system will turn off without any uh, war there's some visual warnings 
but you will not hear it. There's no audible warning. Uh, as with all the other electric cars, when the auto steer turns off, you can clearly hear a warning sound uh, when it does. In the Volvo, you don't have that. So to resume, here we press resume, and we again, and we, when adaptive cruise with auto steer, but again, because of the limitations of the system, always remain in control and remain vigilant, okay? There's no uh, automatic lane changing. It's all manual. Uh, the BMW iX and i4 has the uh, lane change assist where you can, uh, you know, turn the indicator on just like Tesla. It'll do the lane change for you, although BMW does it quite violently. You know, it does it very quickly, almost too quickly, and that's probably what's gonna be corrected in the future software update here. You, it's just a manual lane change, lane change, and as soon as you change the lanes and the car senses the two lane markings in between, uh, it'll resume the, the auto steer. All right, so that's about it uh, for our um, review of the Volvo C40. Thank you for watching.